Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. And I am joined by an actor. You might have seen him in Goon and Goon Last of the Enforcers. He was also in Final Destination 2. And of course, Wolf Cop. I'm with Jonathan Cherry. Jonathan, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Thanks, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It looks very sunny where you are. It's beautiful, man. It's perfect. It's awesome. No, it's uh, it's great to have you on, man. Like you've, I, I know um, you've been uh, you're really busy for a couple of years. You know, fo- uh, filming Goon and uh, Goon Two, Last the Enforcers, that came out in March, actually, in Canada. Um, talk a little bit about uh, what you've been up to specifically. Um, if you've been working on anything, uh, what's been going on in the life of Jonathan Cherry? Like <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did. Um, well, speaking of Wolf Cop, we, we shot a sequel to that in March called Another Wolf Cop. I think oh. that's coming out in Canada in September. Okay. And um, what else? I did another film that's uh, going to be going to festivals uh, next year called The Maestro. Wow. Um, and I'm starting something um, with the, actually the director of Wolf Cop. Uh, his name's Lowell Dean. We're starting a movie called Super Grid in uh, June. Very cool. Yeah. No, yeah. So, so busy time, man. I've been busy, yeah. It's been the last couple of years have been, uh, since Goon 2, been pretty good and pretty busy. I have had other actors on on the show. They talk about basically what ends up happening. And I want to know if, if, if you agree with this or this is the case where you work for like three, four months, you're getting everything ready. And then there comes, you know, one or two months where it's just like nothing much is happening. Where, you know, you're just like, shit, like does that ever happen? Is that, does the busyness come in waves? Where it's like, oh, big time. That's yeah. the total, that's the nature it's the total the nature of the beast for sure. It's uh, I mean I was so you're talking about Final Destination. I I, uh, I worked for I did that and then I did this other movie right after, which I don't know if you, you said you're a big horror fan. Yeah. This is kind of a uh, a mark on my resume, but uh, uh, House of the Dead. Dude, I was just talking to my friend about that man. The video game was like legendary. Yeah, the movie wasn't so legendary, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it yeah, started, you were a, you were a lead in that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd only been, dude. I'd only been acting for a couple years <laughs> when when that happened and Uva Ball happened. And uh, listen, that was fun. In, in retrospect, it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so to your point, I I did Final Destination was like three months straight, and then I started House of the Dead the day I finished that. So it was like basically five or six months straight of work. I moved to Los Angeles and then didn't work for a year. So you know. Wow. But then you, you know, so you never know. I mean, it, it totally comes in waves. You can never predict it. I mean, you could be second choice for every part you audition for and never work again. Or you can just get on a roll and just keep going and going and going. So yeah. I've always, I've had big ups and big downs. Like it just it totally comes in waves. Yeah, absolutely. And okay, so um, we'll get to the Final Destination 2 because, you know, I have a lot of questions. I love about that. that. You love that movie, man. I love them all, man. Like, I just. How old were you? How old were you when that thing came oh, out? Oh, man. So I'm 26. I was 91. So I was. I was like maybe 12. Ele- 13, that 11. came out in 2003 or 4, I believe. So, so you were I was, 12, 13. Yeah, oh, I you're was, a perfect age for that. Perfect. You know what's funny, too? A little goon cross promotion there. Um, um, Sean William Scott was in the first Final Destination. He was. Yeah. Yeah. So, so did you. Um, like, well, and the producer of Final Destination, Craig yeah. Perry, also produced American Pie. Re- man. Yeah, so, so that's how Sean. I think that's how Sean got in Final Destination. I believe they filmed American Pie, and they were like, "Oh, this this guy's going to be a big star. Let's get him in, you know, in this." Yeah, and they and put ev- him in Final Destination. Everyone fr- probably forgets how many movies he's actually done besides American Pie. It's crazy. Like, it is he, crazy. He did good one. The Rundown. I feel like the Rundown is the really Rundown just, was like, amazing the, with with The Rock, awesome. right? With The Rock, yeah. So good. Well, role models. I, role models was good. I'm a bi- I was a big fan of um, Mr. Woodcock. Did you see Mr. Woodcock? Were you? Yeah, yeah, I With saw that. Billy Bob Thornton. I like that. Was, I like that one. That was pretty funny. I like that. It was all right. I, I really I thought he was hilarious in old school. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so funny. I think he he told me he improvised a couple of those lines. I feel like he's I, he's pretty he's pretty proud of it. So what was it uh, like working with him on Goon? It must have been amazing. 
It was amazing. So, to, yeah, so when I was in, um, I went to Vancouver Film School. And when I was in that, when I was in school, American Pie 1 came out. And I, I must have been 20 years old. And he, I really connected to, to him, to his part. I was like, I just thought, you know, those are the types of roles I want to play. Like like the, the funny, uh, not the sidekick, but just like the, the big, broad, you know, the fast talking funny guy. Yeah, I, I, I loved him. So I saw that movie like three times was when I was in school. So when I graduated and I started auditioning, he sort of created a new archetype, a new character for, you know, and every movie started having a stifler. So I, I read so many of those types of characters. So when we finally worked together, he, and he's such a sweet, humble guy. Like he's nothing like stifler at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm more like stifler than he is, which isn't a compliment to me, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just I told him how much of an influence when I first started he was on me. He's like the sweetest dude ever. I love Sean. He was great. It. And those movies, man, like it was just, like American Pie. It was just on TV, and I was watching with my sister like last week. And um, those movies, they started it, man. They started. They yeah. were, they are like iconic movies, and the soundtracks too. Like you know how many bands get linked up into like the American Pie band genre. Like oh, Sum, for sure. Some Forty One is which is one of my Sum favorite bands. Some Forty One. Yeah, yeah. And I actually know the guitarist, Dave Backish. He's been on my show. And man, I don't think right it's not cool to fanboy a lot of certain things, but that was, that was too That's cool, fine. man. I think it is cool to fanboy. I don't think it's anything uncool about it. <laughs> You're a, she's a huge fan. That's awesome. Music's amazing, man. And like, you even look at like Goon, right? And I thought like the soundtracks in Goon, like the first Goon was awesome. Like, yeah, for with example, the Rush, Almond Brothers. Oh, Rush. dude, it was so good, man. Like, I remember the scene where. Um, right before um, the big line brawl, where you guys want to make the like, you guys are going to make the playoffs, and then when that it, Wolf Mother song or something is that Wolf it Mother song, and it shows you, and it was like, and they pull the goalie, and then you, and then when you're like Banzai, and like you attack the guy, like that, that whole scene. That's that's uh, that's actually you know people like uh, quote sometimes lines of mine. My favorite line in that movie is. Isn't the the Percocet one or whatever? It's when I say bonsai, motherfucker. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the best man. Let's yeah. talk about Marco Belcher for a second though, because right. that that is, <laughs> oh my god, just like the first, like we see you like for the first time. <laughs> Where's my fucking helmet? Like right away, and then it's a like, group yeah. sets the tone. It must mm. have been like it must have been amazing playing that character and being dude, able it, to play it, it for two movies. Like I mean, such a dude, so fun, such a you know <laughs> a dream. I mean, uh. uh yeah, like I'm not a B. I'm not a big hockey fan. I like hockey, but I know I played basketball growing up. So yeah. like I'm a terrible goalie. <laughs> but uh, you know, you, you, first time we went to Winnipeg, we did like a two two week sort of training camp where I really figured out how bad I was um, <laughs> at it. But man, it's like going to camp. It's like going to you know. It feels like I imagine a real hockey team feels. You know, we're all together. Uh, we're basically in hockey gear or in a locker room all night long just riffing with each other did you guys be, did you guys know that it was going to be especially like in canada like an instant cult like a cult following movie uh did you have kind of a little bit like yeah this this is this this, this, this might hit it off because it has man a cult following it does i know I, I i when i go to canada even here some like when people you yeah. know, they see like on my resume i was in goon or something they, they get pretty excited about it I, I mean, everyone I think is different. I used to be like so optimistic. I would do the worst movie. Going into it, I'd know it was a bad movie. And then I'd sort of, I'd have a few good days on set where I saw some good stuff. And then I'd, I'd start believing, you know, drinking the movie Kool-Aid and then you know, I'd come around and then it would come out much like House of the Dead and be, you know, like, <laughs> terrible. But Goon, I, 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 so I started to get a bit skeptical or, or more like of a realist. But I, I saw some really, really funny shit, you know, and I, I, I and the script was really good. I had a feeling it was going to be, it was going to be really good. Yeah. I, I I did anyway. Yeah. And and just the cast, like there's some cast with it. Like Kim Coates, you know what I mean? It sounds bad. Coach, like, Coach, Coates, Coates. It, it's, it's him, the best. And like you know, Sean, like having Sean William Scott and like Allison Pill and like it was just yeah. unbelievable having that cast, you know. Um, and yes. uh, it was amazing. Your Final Destination two uh, star, David Pick. Uh, Pakes, yeah, Pakes, one yeah. of my best. Pakeo, Ira, yeah, he's one of uh, my best friends. He's also it, man. He's also in um, the Slap Shot, one of the Slap Shots. Yeah, and, and, Cal and that's where he met Callum Keith Rennie, and Callum did the sequel. 
And he he can you can actually tell him that it's one of my uh, that's I love that one that he's in man like it's just slap so, shot too oh really? dude really? dude because it's like they're they're like the, they be they they become casted as like the bad guys and like and like the losers for like a Harlem Globetrotter show it's hilarious yeah like no, it it's actually tough, hilarious like, I like that Gary Busey's in it who, yeah. who's the who who's the star of it it's uh, Baldwin. Baldwin Stephen Baldwin Stephen Baldwin, Baldwin. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's just like, and then they made another slap a shot, one. like slap shot three that had Tyler Johnson from Letterkenny in it. Okay, I didn't I, even know that they made another one. Yeah, I think it was like a more Canadian done mm. film. Um, but it was just like I don't know, like the Hanson brothers are in it, but like yeah. other than that, it's just yeah, man. I grew up as a big hockey guy, so I was so pissed that the Hanson brothers. I was supposed to go to the premiere in New York. Mm -hmm. For Goon, and I, I didn't go. I don't remember why, but I, I remember looking at the Hanson brothers who came out in New York to that premiere, and I was so pissed I missed that. I wanted to meet those guys. <laughs> Man, it's just, have you met Doug, Doug Smith, the real yeah, Doug? Yeah, a few times. Yeah. A few times. Yeah, he's, he's been on my dude. show. He's great, man. Just to hear yeah. his perspective of it, man, is, it's unbelievable. What was his perspective? Well, his perspective is just that he made this, he had this book just kind of sitting there, and then all of a sudden, Boom! Someone wanted to make a movie out of it, and it's just like it just snapped. Like by the snap mm. of the fingers, his whole perspective on what he did and his past that that would, would like he, like I mean, for someone's story to kind of be put on the big screen, yeah, it's no, insane. All, it is you know awesome. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because he wasn't a famous guy like before that happened. No. He was like a minor league hockey player. How do you did did he talk about how like it's affected him the movie? Like, is it how like? Giving him opportunities or anything? Yeah, we ha we did. We actually had I had him and I had Adam Scorgi, who was the executive producer of Ice Guardians, that documentary. I don't know if you saw that. I never saw that. No. Um, about you know a lot of um, the kind of tough guys and fighters in hockey. So okay. we did we did talk about that um, and talk about how it affected him and he, he. I mean, it was right the the week or two before the March release. I had him on and he was getting ready for all the press and it was just. He, he nice. was really like he was really like a little bit kind of like overwhelmed he didn't really know like he's like man this is unbelievable like it's crazy oh that's awesome yeah I had, I, I had um his buddy who wrote the book uh Adam Fratin what's his name Frat I'm blanking on his last name Fratinacio or is that Frat oh uh, Adam I apologize yeah. uh he's a really nice guy like he came to set for Goon Wong, both of them but uh, I had a good talk with him and his family and uh, I didn't get to talk much with Doug Smith though. I wanted to. Um, that's why I was asking you. Like I didn't. I've never even actually thought about how that might have affected him. No, but, like, he's, he's, positively. Uh, he said it did. I mean, it, he says that. I mean, another thing too is they actually um, like TSN did a like special on him, like oh, a no special way. like like eight minute vignette type thing. Um, and yeah. it was. That like kind of like people didn't. No one knew before that that he, it was based on a real person. Like maybe yeah. some people who were really into it, who like read the synopsis and everything, would have known. But like, it wasn't really known that it was based on a real guy who used to be like, you know, a bodyguard. Doesn't a that make a movie so much better when it oh, starts it does. based on a true story? No matter what, it gives me, me personally, it gives the movie cred, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, um, well, you know, your character in Final Destination, like those people exist. So yeah, <laughs> I do. There's an interesting, there's a co big correlation of uh, between all my characters, and it's mostly drugs. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> drugs and per hair. Percocets, man. The, the Percocets and, and goon, they just stay with you for all, every movie you do. <laughs> I'm sure, like in, in the I, back of your head, like with Wolf Cop, because you play like that goof. You play a little bit of a goofball in Wolf Cop. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like maybe there's that little message in there as well. <laughs> what that I'm a goofball. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, the, no, like what you were saying about drugs and a lot of your characters kind of stay with you. Yeah, <laughs> your it's, a, it's fun. It gives me an excuse to act crazy, you know. But he was on drugs. He was yeah. on drugs, so I could just say whatever I want. So, so I need to ask you, Final Destination 2, um, the first one was such a big deal, and then they made the second one, and it was kind of interesting because Ali Larder was kind of like the only person, like from the first, coming back, so people were kind of like, oh, right away you know like maybe I don't, it's gonna be a whole different movie but i loved it man the car accident yeah. scene like on the bridge like oh my god man it was unreal um, that's awesome what they did was was incredible and then the third with a roller coaster man like that that one too like i i hate to say it but yeah. like i might have liked that one just a little bit better than final destination 2 
<laughs> just because I love that. I'm a theme park guy too, so um, it's right. just unbelievable. But like, yeah. You're the- Wait, so you're not a driving guy? Yeah, I'm. I'm, bu- I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm. Dude, I'm joking. I just bust. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> no, no, like <laughs> I like them both, but I'm a, like I'm a huge theme park guy, and I know for yeah. a fact that it was. No, so the it- third one's cool too, man. I had a bunch of uh, friends in that one because uh, they filmed that in Vancouver as well. So, mm-hmm. so they what? Picked- was, so getting back to the second though, what was it like filming that scene on like uh, on the bridge? Like, how was that? Was that like a very long process? The bridge, not not the bridge, like the the car, the highway, the highway. The highway. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, the highway. it was cr- yeah, it was awesome. It was, uh, I mean, that scene's unbelievable. It's what they did. So the director came as a stunt background, yeah. David Ellis. Um, actually, I think he passed away like, a couple years ago, sadly. Uh, he was like one of the biggest stunt coordinators in the business, uh, and a second unit director before he became a director. So we filmed the whole movie, and then we went to Vancouver Island. Uh, Campbell River is a little town and we got a full like I think a couple miles of a highway or a kilometer like four or five kilometers and uh, it took three weeks to shoot that like we fin- finished the movie and then we literally started almost like felt like a second movie and yeah it took a, I think it was three and a half weeks we were up there filming that just that one scene it was so much fun and I was very new I'd only been acting for a couple of years when I got that so I was learning a lot you know and I have to say it now, though, like, spoiler alert, just in case, like, you know, people who are watching this want to watch all the Final Destinations. But are you in the loop with the Final Destinations? Because the last one that came out, like, yeah. I don't know have you, like, the, I don't know if you saw it, like, the last, last one that came out. They showed, I'm in it a bit, right? Yeah, you are. Um, a yeah. lot of characters are. But I don't, are you, are you, you're not going to watch it, right? Like, I can tell you. Like, well, tell me, yeah, hold on. I might watch it. I might okay. have watched it. What was it called? It was... Uh, it was the last one, and it had Nick D'Agostino in it, who was in Fired Up. And is it the one on the bridge? It. Yeah, that's the bridge I one. did yeah. watch that. I did see it. The ending, man. The full circle ending. What What happened? Tell me. Well, I it's remember. like he's on – his character is on the plane with Devin Sawa and Sean William Scott. Oh, he was so a baby like, or something? No, he's like so. Basically, it like his that that bridge scene was like the first one that happened. It was the first destination, and then they show up. Uh. And he, he's going to France for culinary school, and he's just sitting down, and he's like, "Oh, like I didn't die. Like everything's good." And then you see that scene from the first where Devin Sao was getting like like kicked off. The yes, plane. I do kind of remember that. Yeah, so it was almost like a it happened at the same time as the first one. Yeah, it was like a prequel. But- but death never got to him until. Oh, that's cool. I don't. I, I vaguely remember that, but that's yeah. a that's an awesome take on that. I know. I, just, I, I love those full circles, man. That like. Kind yeah, of... I think it was the. I love that series. Like I saw the first movie and I thought it was awesome. Like I, I so I, I knew what it was when I auditioned for number two, but I think it was the same writer Eric Bress who did, who wrote number two. I think he did. He wrote that one as well. Yeah, he, he did, yeah. and then there was also, and they did, like, there was, then there was after, like, the fourth wasn't the best, um, it was okay, but it was, like, 3D, it was a 3D one. In and the racetrack? Yeah, that it was, yeah, like, yeah. it had a sick opening, because we were talking about how I love music, and music's important, they had, like, Devoured by yeah. Shinedown in the beginning of that, and I was always like, oh, that's nice. a pretty cool song to put in the, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of an out-of-the-box guy, man, I think of the things that, people don't really think about all the time when they think of a movie so that's all dude you're a true fan that's awesome man i, I like that it's good and uh you know you mentioned to me a little bit before too but like how did john and sherry start like acting like how did when did that all start for you uh so i mean i think i always uh wanted to to do it i was probably you know where i was raised and how i, I just it wasn't really an option you know and i didn't even think it was a possibility mm-hmm. uh but growing up, all I, I loved, you know, I loved movies, basketball, you know, like I, like I really just, I didn't have huge interest outside of that. And then I went to uh, Western for a year. And while I was there, I, I, I just was, you know, noticing what everyone was into and everyone was very, well, not everyone, but a lot of the people I was, I was hanging out with, they were all very clear about what they wanted and, uh, you know, what their goals were. And they, they knew a lot about, you know, I mean, Western's one of those schools, but a uh, big party school, and they, yeah. they knew a lot about, like, material stuff. They all had, like, you know, tunnel vision for what they wanted, and I had yeah. no idea. So I, I sort of 
I took a week off. I was, I think I was in my apartment a little bit depressed for like a week because I, I just felt like I had no, you know, focus. And uh, I remember a uh, trailer for Titanic was coming out. I think it was like 19. Yeah. And uh, uh, I saw like DiCaprio on the end of this huge boat. And I knew it was like a major thing. I had no idea about budgets or what the budget would have been at that time. I didn't really know much, you know, and I just thought that is so epic. But I, I, I was in denial. I was like, I, I thought that was really cool, but I thought, you know what, that's an industry. Like, I love movies. Why, why can't I just go hammer nails into a boat? Like, like a lot of people had to build that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I, I came to the you know terms of like, I'm, I'm bullshitting myself. Like, I want to be an actor. Like, that's really what I've always wanted. So I went away to, uh, to see my parents at Christmas and I told both of them, you know, that I wanted to do it. They, they, uh, it was pretty random to them because they had no idea. They didn't, they hadn't heard anything about that before. And it was really funny. I, I, uh, I, I looked into Vancouver film school because I, the one actor I knew growing up, he, he talked about going there and I came back to London, Ontario, and I had uh, dinner with my best friend at the time. And he, we both sort of, you know, had big news for each other. Like we were, I told him, I was, I was going there to tell him I'm dropping out and I want to be an actor and I'm going to Vancouver film school. And his, he was coming to tell me the exact same thing, which is, which is so random and so crazy. Yeah. So literally four months later, we were, you know, driving across Canada in his uh, VW, uh, his crappy VW Golf. And uh, we had no place to live. We were just both signed up to Vancouver film school. And so we did, Got there, did the year-long program, which we learned a lot, and uh, and then it just it was really busy there at that time. So I, uh, you know, I got I think I got lucky at the time that I started that it, there was a lot of opportunities and it sort of just happened. But you say luck, but I'm also gonna say, even though you're not gonna admit it, like the hard work and dedication that you show, man, is unbelievable. You can definitely see it with the like what what you've done. It's yeah. it's amazing, man. Like you, thanks, like, man. Congrats on all the success, you know. Um, I appreciate it. You've been in some amazing movies, and thank you. It means, like, the world that you came on my show, man. Oh, like, dude, anytime. I'll, I'll gladly come back whenever you want. Oh, for sure, man. For, we, yeah. we do a lot of panels, too, so maybe we can get you on a panel as well. Like, do it. It would be yeah. awesome. But, uh, Jonathan, thank you so much I'm for down. joining us. We'll, we'll wrap up here. But um, any closing remarks, anything you want to just plug or, or say before we go? Uh, no, man. Listen, it was great meeting you. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I think we talked about the things I'm doing. I got that super grid movie, and Wolf Cop Two is coming out, and uh, Goon Two in the States. It's coming in September. If people, oh, yeah. uh, if any Americans are watching this, go oh, see yeah. Goon Two. And, James uh, Duffy. That was a big get. Eh? Everyone's talking about yeah, T yeah, yeah. T J Miller, but James Duffy was a good friend of mine who's been on the show a couple of times. Like he, he was great too. I thought he did a good job. That's like the greatest like. Like, that's a great, like, duo, though. Like, James yeah. Duffy and T.J. Miller. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. No, they were funny. I love them in that movie. I yeah. think they're really funny. Uh, what else? I, uh, no, man, listen. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm right. unprepared. Well, Jonathan, Jonathan Cherry, thank you so much. Um, and Thank uh, you, man. Great meeting you, and uh, we'll do this again. Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. You can catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our YouTube and our SoundCloud and iTunes as well. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who's been checking out our episodes these past couple of weeks. I know we have a lot. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.